Marcellus, get us rolling. Mm. Should I be concerned the Chiefs are getting too much hype? <laughs> Let's stay in the music analogy. It's time for you to face the music, brother. <laughs> <laughs> it does not matter what's going on in storyline and media when it comes to playing the game of football. This game of football is about preparation. And that preparation is the separation. And when you're in those moments of truth, I don't care what people say about you. I don't care what people think about you. I don't care what you think about yourself. Are you ready to execute in that moment of truth? I sat down with Barry Sanders one time and just, you know, marveling at his greatness. And I just, said, one just one time? Just one time. Just one time. And I remember him saying, you know the difference between a six-yard loss and a 60-yard touchdown run? Six inches. Gap discipline. I discipline. You out of position. That's the difference. Not six media requests, not six articles written. It's about being ready in this moment. We've seen media darlings go out there and have amazing success. You also saw them wet the bed. So in a situation like this, I would just go out there. If I'm the Kansas City Chiefs, I'm not counting what's happening on the outside sphere. It doesn't matter if they introduce the 49ers first or introduce us first. You can look at that two different ways. If we go first, oh, they know we're the stuff. If we go last, they're saving the best for last. It's all a story that you tell yourself, but make sure you tell yourself the most important story. Be ready for those moments of truth. Really? Uh, well, if I'm, if I'm a Chiefs fan, I have to have a ton of trepidation going into this game. You cannot buy into the hype of selling offense, selling touchdowns, and selling long passes, and Mahomes becoming the greatest quarterback of all time. Uh, this 49ers defense is more than capable of dismantling that Kansas City offense. Ooh. And furthermore, dismantling. That's a strong word. dismantling, uh, dismantling mm. that Kansas City offense. And furthermore, what could actually happen and could be even more of a factor in this game is we're really not talking about the 49ers offense. People are not talking about the matchup as it applies to offenses versus offenses. It's not apples to apples. This is an apples to orange comparison. Everybody thinks it's the Niners defense versus the uh, Kansas City offense. And what I'm telling you right now, you better pay attention to the way the 49ers have been running the football. Pay attention to the way Garoppolo has been protecting the ball and his confidence level. I think it's going to be a very, very hard task for Kansas City to be able to beat this 49ers team. I would say this. I think, one, it's really important how you hear that noise. If you're the Chiefs, do you buy into that hype? Do you listen to that noise? Do you let it affect you? Do you get overconfident? Because that's the worst thing that can happen to you. Here's the thing that I think would settle me down if I was a Chiefs fan. And I'm not, because I hate the Chiefs with the white hot intensity of a thousand suns. So, wow. but, but if I was a Chiefs fan, this is what would calm me a little bit. They have overcome adversity of a 24 uh, you know, 24 nothing lead and a 17 nothing lead. And they have stayed true to who they are. You know, the whole game plan when you face the Chiefs is, hey, the normal game has 11 to 12 possessions. Can we keep it down to eight? If we can keep it down to eight, you know, then, uh, because we possess the ball, we run the ball, we're San Francisco, then we're all right. Well, what happens if Kansas City scores six or eight possessions? It doesn't matter mm. that you keep them down to eight possessions. So, listen, if they had just come out and trucked both Houston and Tennessee from the start, if they never faced any adversity, I would be much more concerned about the hype that is going on right now. But because they've had to overcome those deficits, because they've had to overcome and fight through, um, you know, th that potential pitfall, it doesn't concern me that they're going to let that kind of let their egos grow in what they've accomplished so far. We would both agree, though, I think we would all agree, Houston and Tennessee far inferior football teams to the Kansas City Chiefs. San Francisco is not a far inferior football team. Right. I think the Chiefs are better, but it's so close. If someone argues the other side, they're legitimate as uh, well. I, I would just agree. I think, I think San Francisco is a better football team. There you I think go. Kansas City <laughs> has a more dynamic quarterback and a better offense. In, you know, like a, a more dynamic, not a better offense, a more dynamic offense. And so I think we would all agree. If it's 17 nothing San Francisco, at any point in this game, Chiefs ain't winning. That's going to be a tough I, I, I wouldn't say that. I, I wouldn't go that far. I will say this, that the media is not allowed in the meeting rooms. 
And <laughs> let's not confuse that these players are talking about everything we're going to bring up, plus some, in full preparation of this game. And it's, it's amazing that right now, if you look at the 49ers as an opponent, you're like trying to pick your poison because that running game, that running game is outstanding. And then you talk about Jimmy Garoppolo. Everyone has something to say negative about Jimmy Garoppolo, except he puts points up on the board. Number one scoring, we talk about the Chiefs. Number two scoring since he's been in the league, Jimmy Garoppolo. He could be your game manager. He could be the one that exploits you if you don't respect him as a passer. So I just look at... The storylines are obviously going to be for the Chiefs. They're more explosive, and they've never been here. We're selling subscriptions up here, brother. We've seen the 49ers here seven years ago. Who's talking about that? That's I've yesterday news. I've never seen, in 36 years of following the Chiefs, a team that talks the way this Chiefs team does. And that's what's disconcerting to me. Mm. And, and listen, you hear coaches say all the time, you're reading your uh, press clippings. Right, People get caught up in that, and... Uh, and I, I hope it works. I, I hope... 17 that... nothing is a game over. Yeah. I'm going to tell you why. You would have said that last week. <laughs> 10 nothing. I'm 24 die. nothing. Everybody no, not, not, with, mm. not with the 49ers. With the 49ers, I'm going to tell you why 17 nothing means game. You got some dogs up front. Yeah. Maybe even some lions, tigers, and bears. Um, <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. But, but they, they don't necessarily come after you and are able to get to you. It's more of an experience. You're at the zoo. You get up 17 points, you're not at the zoo, you're in a safari, mm -hmm. all right? And mm -hmm. once you're in a safari, as safe as you think you are, you can still get picked off. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you right now, though, that defensive front would be off the chain with a 17-point lead. I would not want to see any team right now in the NFL going against that defensive front with a 17-spotted point th lead. Again, that's my cons The Chiefs, I was talking to... I was talking to Eric Mangini uh -huh. in, in the green room before, and he's... He, we were talking about, hey, the Chiefs have been a little sloppy early in game, dropping balls, right. uh, you know, falling behind, obviously, dropping punts and things like that. They've been sloppy early. And, and again, it's not... The Chiefs may be blessed with too much talent because sometimes you have to... You don't have to concern yourself with all the details. Mm. And I think the details will matter this Sunday, and I think that this whole narrative of the Chiefs being the greatest thing to hit football and kind of having this New York swagger to them where they're the Joe Namath or they're the Richard Sherman. That, that's how this team feels like Richard Sherman is the leader of this team. And it's not a detailed-oriented team, and it, it scares me. I, I will tell you, you look at just the Niners in general defensively, and I think this is a... I, I'm a believer in the keep it simple, stupid process, right? right? I'm a believer in this is what we are, this is how we got here. When you look at Robert Sala, the defensive coordinator of the San Francisco 49ers, they, they essentially play, you know, a, a form of cover three. He brought it with Seattle from him, right? A matchup three. And when you, when you are simplistic in what you do and everybody is on par and on the, on the same page with what you do and you have the beasts up front that they have, they can line up five first-round draft picks as a defensive line. They can line them up and they can come after you that way. But when you run one thing and you run it exceptionally well, it, it eliminates it eliminates you, your ability to have to think. It eliminates your ability to make mistakes. And it lets you play as a defensive faster. player faster. Play faster. And that's what, that's to me, it gives them a slight advantage from that standpoint of what everybody else does trying to say, hey, are we going to trick Mahomes? You're not going to trick Mahomes. You're not going to show him something that he's... Even if you get him initially on the initial read, on the pre-snap look, Mahomes can hold the ball, and he's... I, I used to say that Aaron Rodgers was the greatest off-platform thrower I've ever seen. I think, I think Mahomes has usurped him as the greatest off-platform thrower I've ever seen. So even if you trick him initially, he can hold the ball, he can scramble around, he can make a play with his feet or with his hands. So I think the simplistic nature of San Francisco gives them, you know, an advantage compared to the other teams that can't see these face in the playoffs. Yeah, think about the expectations to be dominant. I think that's what they suffer from in the first two rounds. They were supposed to dominate Houston. They're supposed to dominate Tennessee. Uh, they're the Kansas City Chiefs. And that's a pressure to be perfect. And when you're fully confident, you may skip a fundamental step in the pursuit of being perfect or going out there and dominating. Then you take a collective breath as a team's like, hold on, man. 
Let's just do the little things. That's going to add up to something mm. big. And that's what happens in these situations. I see that. This team has confidence. And that confidence, when it's matched with praise, when it comes from outsiders, it doesn't do anything to you. It does something to the guy who's not as confident. He may start reading his press clippings because he's now thinking of a new identity. Oh, I'm this instead of who I really am? I think this team led by Patrick Mahomes is going to go out there and this time because they're not expected to dominate. They're not expected to go out there and beat down the 49ers. They're going to be ready for every single moment. I think I know where you're at, so I'm going to start with LeVar. Do you like Kansas City coming into this game with this much confidence, swagger, the attitude that they're showing? I do. I do. And, and the reason why I like the, the confidence and the attitude is it's something that, one, they've, they've brought an excitement to their market that has not existed there. They've been a cusp team for so long, and I think that they've given not only themselves a lot of, of hope and confidence, they're giving their community a lot of confidence. I think if you project and you portray a strong front, a confident front, if you go into it and you win it, I think that the amount of excitement that, that comes from and resonates from that um, is probably unmeasurable. So I think it's a good thing for them to do Mark, that. do you like the attitude? <sighs> yeah, I do, as a matter of fact. I mean, I, it, it, there's such a difference between confidence and arrogance. Mm -hmm. See, confidence, the confidence is, is bred from your ability knowing that you put the work in and knowing that you're talented enough because you put that work in. Arrogance comes from a place of fear. Mm -hmm. I haven't put the work in. Exactly. I'm not that talented, so let me puff out my chest and let me talk. Now, I'm an offensive lineman, so nothing good can happen to you when you play offensive line in a football game. <laughs> there is nothing good. <laughs> it's all 100% bad. So. I am, you know, I am I, little. I'm chicken little. The sky is falling. I'm Horton. Here's a who, man. I'm always nervous about those things. But like Kansas being a nightclub. Right. But Kansas City, <laughs> right? Kansas City to me has earned the right to have that confidence right now and have some swagger because what they've done, not only over the last two years, but what they've done in overcoming the playoffs. Doesn't it beat the alternative? Oh, shucks. I'm so happy we're here. Wow. How did we find our way to Miami? I like that because some boxers want to win the face off. Oh, I'm looking in your eye. I'm ready. And some right. just want to win the rounds, win the damn fight. I like being an underdog. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Speak for Yourself or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.